Right, so as a part of your final major design project brief, we have asked you to write your own brief. And you might wonder why that is. Excuse the naff PowerPoint slide. But I really just want to give you um, some clarity on what you need to incorporate into the brief that you write because the format of this brief will be different to the module briefs that you are used to us giving you. So first of all briefs are um, a very common tool in the design industry so designers very often work to briefs you might even find yourself in a position where you write a brief um, to other people one day. And so it's a very useful um, way of really getting you to understand um, at what a brief is. This year, you'll probably also be working towards uh, briefs written by other people, so not ourselves. Uh, you will be working um, towards uh, competition briefs, which are written by um, other people who you might not be able to ask for any clarity if there's anything you're unsure about. So it really is about your interpretation as a designer. But for this module, we want to give you um, the freedom to define how you want to, um, what you want to do for your final major design um, project. So, but with freedom also comes great responsibility. Um, but really, we're doing it because we want to help you define your approach to fashion design. We want you to define your own goals and we want you to create a project that is meaningful to you. And also to see that path from what you're doing now as a student uh, and how that might um, become a um, the starting point for your professional career. And also we want to encourage you to use and enhance your talents and your skills that you've developed so far. Okay, so I'm going to list um, the different components that we want you to incorporate. Now, I don't necessarily, you don't necessarily have to put them in this specific order. Uh, because as you write it, you will find that one is a part of, you know, you might actually include um, two of these aspects in the same sentence because they're not um, even if they're not exactly the same, they are very much interlinked. So, but we start with ethos and for you to articulate your ethos as a designer. So what are your values, your attitude? What is your vision for your collection? And that is necessarily rooted in, you know, your vision for fashion. What do you value in fashion? Um, and also in life in general, um, what is a good life to you? Um, what is good fashion design to you? So it's really important that you believe in it and that it's rooted then in your um, definition of fashion. So we're going to work a bit on helping you kind of tease that out and articulate exactly what that might be. Um, and related to this is also very much your approach to design. So how do you plan on achieving this? How do you um, work best? I think that's a really good um, starting point. So um, how, you know, what inspires you when you're working? Um, when do you feel that you are kind of in the zone? When you're in um, what people call the flow of creativity? What is it that you're doing then? Um, are you up at the cutting tables or by the sewing machine? Are you maybe working digitally on a computer or is it when you're just, you know, sitting there sketching, hand drawing, or is it when you're ma manipulating materials and fabrics? But I think it's a really good um, approach to just start with when you work best and also what inspires you. Um, and I think this is the time to play to your strengths. In the first and second year, and probably on your year out as well, on placement, you probably have had to um, use other approaches, maybe tools and um, uh, and ways of working that you haven't been necessarily that comfortable with. Um, and this is the time to go, right, I tried that, now I'm going to really 
focus on what I'm good at uh, and and really push that. And it doesn't mean you don't have to do anything that you're not um, brilliant at. But I think focusing in on what makes you, um, what you know, what your strengths are is a really good starting point. So I've just used example here of Christopher Rayburn. Um, and you get a sense on his website just how important um, his approach to design, how that is, it's kind of infused in his branding as well. So, um, you know, your approach as well is to do with things like, you know, are you technically strong? Um, you know, is it through innovative pattern cutting or beautifully crafted garments that you show your strength? Or is it maybe around a love of colour and texture? Um, and what inspires you tends to be, you know, a good starting point, you know, for getting you going. Um, and it could be around sustainability. But if this is in your ethos, it also needs to be embedded in your process. Um, but this can happen in so many different ways um, through, you know, how you pattern cut, source your materials, treat your materials, um, end use and so on. Um, it might be that your approach to design is around, you know, being user centred and thinking about who is actually going to use your project um, and who you're designing them for and that you want them, that relationship between the designer and the user to be completely um, integral to the design process. That means you need to get other people involved. Um, you know, do you like to work collaboratively? Do you like to work with other people using their particular skills um, and um, and combining those with your own. That is typically how design really happens. Um, I don't know if anyone you watched that Netflix series, Abstract, The Art of Design, and um, which features um, document, sort of shorter documentaries with a range of designers from all kinds of disciplines. But what I think is really good about it is that it gives you such an idea of the sheer range of approaches that designers take. Um, and that there isn't just one way, but also how how much their personality colours their approach to design. And that is also something that continuously evolves with their practice. Um, so as they're gaining experience, um, their their work really is, and their approach, you know, how they are working changes, and they understand what works and what doesn't work for them better and better. But yeah, brilliant series if you haven't seen it. Okay, so another really important aspect of your brief will be articulating who your audience is, um, who is your customer. Who are you talking to? But also kind of what kind of situation are they in? How will they use those clothes um, to their advantage? Um, and I think, you know, what sort of um, context, lifestyle, you know, is it outdoor pursuits or red carpet? What season is it? Um, and what kind of place do they find themselves? What does their life, lives look like? I think your customer or your audience should become very clear to you as you are designing. So they may be actual people that you know, um, but if they're not, I think they should become alive to you. So even if you're making someone up, as it were, I want you to take the approach of a novelist and create a character who is, who is whole, who is an actual person, because I really think that helps you um, in the design process um, visualising, you know, an actual body, an actual place or an actual audience, because it could be that you're not actually wanting to design clothes that go on people. It could be something else. But regardless, your work will have an audience. Um, you might also want to think about things like what other brands will sit along your collection. Um, what kind of, you know, what level of the market are you aiming at? Is it going to be affordable or luxury fashion? Or are you wanting to sit outside of those kind of commercial realities? <clears throat> so, we've done the who. Now, what do you go, what are you going to create? Outcomes. It doesn't actually have to be clothes as such in the traditional sense. 
Uh, maybe you want to create a collection of accessories or a fashion related installation. It doesn't even have to be physical anymore. But I think if it's digital, you need to know that you can really push those boundaries. We are fashion designers after all, but again, it's all about how you want to um, define uh, the role of a fashion designer. So related to this, objectives. Why are you doing it? And what do you hope to achieve through your outcome? So that might be about particular skills that you want to build or develop further. And maybe what do you want, you know, and what do you want to aim to achieve through that work? It could be about creating prototypes for a future brand you want to start. It could be about educating people on how to look after the garments. Um, it could be about just creating someone's favourite dress that makes them feel like they could take on the world. Uh, it might mean creating garments for a group which are under underrepresented by the industry at the moment. Or it could be about you simply showcasing your skills um, uh, in tailoring or print design or um, using colour, um, whatever it is. So finally, we want you to incorporate the sources you're drawing on. Um, this probably will come at the end. Um, it's books, articles, etc. you've drawn on in your research. Um, and this doesn't actually form a part of the word count. So we set this brief to for a 300 word, word count and that's really because it doesn't have to be any longer than that. You don't have to go into any details. Your brief should be what guides you through the project. But at the same time, you probably won't finalise your brief until the final moment either because this is a process of refining, gradually and gradually refining it. So I want you to set up a kind of working document and that can be um, a Word document or it could be something in your sketchbooks and your notebooks. Jotting down ideas, jotting down words, um, starting to put together then gradually into sentences, kind of making those connections and reflecting on your work, discussing your work, with other people, I think is really important, and kind of reassessing and reevaluating, and it's a kind of circular process, and um, and I think as designers as well, you will feel like you are constantly um, refining and refining, and that is that simply the practice of doing design. If we didn't have a deadline, we would never finish anything. So. Um, the practice of writing a brief helps you understand, I think, the function um, and the kind of anatomy of a brief um, because designers work to brief all the time um, and some may be very clearly formulated and others less so. But this really is your go um, and we want to put uh, the power into your hands, but we are going to help you along the way. So don't feel intimidated and good luck. <laughs>